Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining today. In this webinar, I want to share with you the power of filters inside On One Photo Raw 2020. So basically, we're going to take the first 15 filters inside of Effects, and I'm going to explain to you how they work, when you should use them, and a few different unique tips and tricks to each that you can use to cater to your own photographs. So let's get started, and I have this image inside Photo Raw 2020. And since we're not really talking too much about the Develop tab, all I've done in here is I've gone in and I've changed the camera profile from on one standard to on one landscape. And I've gone in and I've lowered the highlights a little bit, I've boosted the shadows, added a little bit of white and some blacks just for some contrast. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, I was just going for kind of a base look on this shot. So now let's head into the effects tab and we'll add a filter and we'll start with the first filter which is the antique filter. And before I jump into the antique filter, I just wanna let you guys know that if you are really new to Photo Raw and um, you haven't really modified filters too much, inside of the filter dialog here, you can actually search for different filters by using keywords, and you can find those keywords just by hovering over different filters. So if you hover over a filter, like black and white here, it'll give you an example on the right with that filter applied, and it will also give you a little description of what that filter does and also some keywords. So this one, black and white, turns a color photo into a monochromatic photo with options for toning and film grain. Um, if you want to search for this filter or a filter like it, you can just go to the search bar and you can just type in BW. And there you go. There's your black and white filter. So we'll start with antique here. And the antique filter gives your photo an aged look similar to the very, very, so the antique filter gives your photo an aged look similar to the early photographic processes. Unlike the vintage filter, this filter focuses more on a monochromatic or hand colored look. So if we apply the antique filter, right off the bat you can see it brings on sort of an aged look onto the image. Now not all of the presets in here are uh, dimming down of the colors. Some of them actually bring in pretty intense colors onto your photograph. Uh, to use the antique uh, filter, I would recommend starting with just picking a color here. So uh, in here we have this color menu and we can hover down here and we can choose through these different colors of this filter. And then once you've chosen a filter, I'll just choose, or once you've chosen a color, I'll just choose Caro. Now I can come down here and I can modify the look of that uh, color. So I can modify the brightness if I want it a little bit brighter, kind of dim it down. I have some fade, so if I wanted to bring in a fade to the shot, and then if the photo is a little bit too desaturated for my liking, I can bring in more color with the saturation slider. And then also if I want some film grain, I can head down here and I can bring in some film grain to the shot. And that's going to bring in some of that kind of crispy noise that's uh, prevalent in a lot of film shots. So you can bring in uh, a little bit of film grain in here and modify the size. And another thing you could use in the antique to just kind of develop uh, look real quick, you could just go into this more, and there's a few different ones that you can use in here as well. So I'm just going to go down here, and I'm actually going to choose this Marcel one. And what I like to use the antique filter for is bringing in kind of aged looks onto my shot and uh, really dull colors. I really like what it does to just bring in kind of a faded vintage -y look without modifying the color too much. So one thing that I like to do with the antique filter is I'll come into the blending options here. I'll click on the gear icon and I'll go to my mode. And a few different blend modes that I like to use with the antique filter are soft light and also the hue blend mode. So if I go down here to soft light, what the soft light blend mode is going to do is it's going to blend this antique filter onto my photograph by applying it with some contrast. So basically it's going to take the colors in this antique filter that I have and it's going to blend it in with my photograph but it's going to blend it in by adding in contrast. So we're going to remove that faded look here by bringing in that contrast with the soft light blend mode. Now I know it's pretty intense so you can go in here and you could lower the opacity or you could come down here and you could lower or you could brighten it up a little bit or you could lower the saturation a little bit so you can modify this so it's not so intense on your photograph by just using the different sliders in here. And that soft light is a really good one for adding in that contrast. So now with that soft light here applied, actually I'll reset this and then we'll just go to soft light. And so if I just started out with the filter 
and I went into the mode soft light right off the bat. Now watch as I go over these different colors. Suddenly they're not so intense on my shot and they really bring in a nice uh, temperature to my photograph while also maintaining some nice deep contrast. So soft light with the antique filter is an awesome way to use it. And then another blend mode that I like to use with the soft light, or sorry, another blend mode that I like to use with the antique filter is the hue blend mode. So if I go down to hue and I click here, now watch as I hover over these different colors. You can use this to bring in a very subtle color change into your shot and it won't affect any of the tonalities like your contrast or things like that. So with the hue blend mode, we'll just go down to, we'll use Moscow, but with the hue blend mode, it's basically taking your antique filter and it's applying that filter strictly to the color in your shot, just the color and just the hues of the color. So that's allowing this filter to protect the uh, tones. So you're not modifying any of the contrast or exposure. You're only changing the color within your shot. So you can use this antique filter with the hue blend mode applied to it, and you can modify the different colors within your shot. So I could do that one. I could make it more saturated. But brightness isn't going to modify anything because it's only applied to the color. So if I turn this off and on now, and I zoom in here, it's very subtle but does an awesome job of just kind of cooling things down within my photo. So the antique filter, awesome for bringing in vintage sort of aged looks onto your shot, dimming down colors a little bit. And if you want to use some blend modes to make them not so strong, use hue and soft light. And the next filter we're going to talk about is the black and white filter. So we'll just move on down here to black and white, which turns a color photo into a monochromatic photo with options for toning and film grain. So if we click on this, it immediately turns our image to a black and white photo now. So in the black and white filter, there's two different ways that you can convert your image to a black and white image. And the first way is this color response. And color response is basically taking the different colors within your original photograph. And once you convert it to black and white, you can use these different sliders in here to bring out brightness and darkness within your colors. So since it's black and white, we can't bring in more color, but we can modify the luminance or the brightness of the colors in our scene. So down here in this color response area, let's say, so let's just turn off the black and white filter. So we can see in this shot, if we zoom in here, we have a ton of yellows and greens in our uh, background area. So let's turn this black and white back on. And we want to bring, if we want to bring in a little bit of life into these yellow and green tones, I can go down to these sliders here and I'll pull up on my yellow. And you can see I can incorporate brightness into those specific colors or I can dim them down just by using these sliders. And I can do it to the green a little bit. There's not as much green as there is yellow. And then if I go down here, there's a little aqua in this foreground area. I'll just do 50. And so if I pull up on this aqua, I can dim that down or brighten it up. I don't know where there's, there's not too much blue in the shot. Maybe there's a little blue up here. Yeah. So I can kind of dim that blue down up there a little bit. And that's the way to use the color response method to convert your black and white images. You basically just use these different sliders in here and you can modify the lightness of all of them. And the second way to convert your black and white images is with the channel mixer conversion. So if I click on channel mixer, now I'm basically converting my image based off of a specific color channel within my uh, photograph. So for example, if we turn this black and white filter off, and we go back to this channel mixer conversion, if we hover over the kind of yellowy orange area, it's going to leave our image quite bright. And that's because we have a lot of yellows and oranges and greens within our shot. But if we don't have those colors within our photograph, we can go over to those colors that aren't very prevalent and we can darken up our scene quite a bit because it's looking for those colors within our shot and they're not there. So it's basically going to darken up those tones. So you can see how we're moving more towards that red kind of yellow and it's pushing those tones up and we move towards that blue. It's darkening those tones in the foreground because there isn't any blue tones there. So we'll just take it back to kind of a yellow, really brighten those tones up. Perfect. 
And so now we've converted our image to black and white using the different conversion methods. So now we can go down here into this tone area and we can actually modify the tonality of our shot overall. So this is the general kind of look of the black and white. You're not modifying specific colors down here in the tone area. So if I want to pull up on the brightness, I can bring in more exposure to the shot. I can add more contrast. I can increase the shadows. So I can basically fine tune the look of my overall black and white photograph with this tone area underneath the conversion method. And one thing I would recommend doing in this tone area is play with your blacks. Um, blacks are a crucial, crucial element to black and white photographs and so are whites. So if you're going down into this tone area, start playing with your whites and blacks and you'll really start kind of developing your own black and white style. Because after all, that's what makes up black and white images are the black and white tones. So you can see that by just pulling up on these whites and modifying some of these blacks, I can really incorporate kind of a rich tonal contrast within my scene. And then below the tone area, we have our toner. So inside of the toner area, this is basically our split toning for our black and white. So if you want to add in a little bit of a color tint to your black and white, this would be the area to do that. And all you have to do is just click on the menu and there's a bunch of preset styles in here. I really like this black tea one. And any of these black teas are really nice. And then also these sepia ones are really nice. So if I choose the sepia color now, I can go down here into my highlights and my shadows and you can see it's changed their colors. So my highlights now are kind of this cream color and then my shadows are kind of this red orange. Well, I can modify the amount of each to incorporate more of that cream color or less. I can modify the balance. So that's basically the balance between the shadow and highlight tones. I can incorporate more of the highlights or more of the shadows. I'll just leave it at 50. And also with this hue slider, I can adjust the actual color of those tonalities. So if I want my shadows more blue, I can drag this over to the blue area on the hue slider. And if I want my highlights more, let's say red, I could just drag them over to the red. I'll pull up on my amount. Oops. Sorry, I gotta click on the color here because it's on white. So let's click here. There we go. So now I have red and I can modify this hue slider to adjust the color of those tones. Then I can pull back on the amount if I want it less or strong. And then there's this awesome tool down here that says preserve black and white. So if you want to actually keep the blacks and the whites nice and protected, you can click on this. And if there's true whites and true blacks, it's going to protect them so you don't apply that color toning to them. And then below that we have film grain. So if we want to incorporate a nice film grain, we can bring in uh, sort of that noisy look that's prevalent in a lot of uh, film shots. And we can just click on this menu and we have all of the different film presets here. I typically like this 3200, especially if I'm adding in film grain, why not add in a bunch? And the 3200 is going to bring in quite a bit. So I'll just pull up on this amount. I'll make the size quite big and then you guys can see it. And now I have this kind of faded black and white shot uh, with the black and white filter. And the black and white filter is an awesome filter for pretty much any photograph. You can use it on portraits, you can use it on landscapes, macro, really anything that you want to just kind of desaturate. Uh, it's an awesome filter for that. And another cool way that you can use the black and white filter, we'll reset this here, I'll just add a new one, is to use a blending mode with the black and white filter. So if I go into the black and white filter here, I'm going to click on the blending mode options and I'll go into the mode and I'm going to go down to luminosity. So if I click luminosity for this blend mode, I'm basically taking my photograph and I'm taking the blend mode or the black and white filter and I'm applying that uh, black and white filter to my original photograph strictly to the tones that are in the contrast, the midtones, the shadows and the highlights. I'm only applying it to the luminance. And what that means is it's not being applied to any of the color or the saturation in my shot. So it's not affecting the color and it's not desaturating it. It's actually not converting my image to black and white because it's not being applied to those areas within my scene. I'm actually now just blending it into the kind of contrasty tones in my photograph that I would modify in my tone paint, like my exposure, my brightness, my highlights, my whites, things like that. That's where the black and white filter is now applied to. So a cool way to use this in conjunction with the color response conversion method is now if I take a look at my, my yellows and greens, if I want to just brighten these up, I can head down in here to the color response area and I can just brighten these up or dim them down just by using these sliders now. So now I'm basically turning this black and white filter into a color adjustment filter 
just by using that luminosity blend mode. And I can use these to kind of fine tune the look of my colors, making them either bright or kind of dim down. I can modify that aqua color to dim that down as well. So there's a few different things I could do inside this black and white just by using that luminosity blend mode in my blending options. So we'll move on to the next filter here, which is Bleach Bypass. And Bleach Bypass is an awesome filter for kind of just incorporating contrast, dimming things down a little bit. If we go back to that filter dialog and we hover over this, it says this filter is based upon an old color film processing technique where the bleaching step was skipped. It reduces the saturation and increases the contrast. It is a popular look in the cinema. So the one thing that I like about Be Bleach Bypass is that it allows you to modify the tint. Now, there's two different filters inside Photo Raw that do kind of similar things, and one is Bleach Bypass and one is the Grunge Filter. And to me, they kind of do the similar look onto your photograph. They desaturate a little bit and they add in a ton of contrast. Well, with the Bleach Bypass filter, you can actually modify the tint, so you can actually use this as sort of a photo filter and kind of a grunge filter at the same time. So with Bleach Bypass, there's a few different presets in here, and all you have to do to modify your bleach bypassing is you modify your amount. So this is how strong this is on your photograph. So once you've reached your amount, you can modify your brightness. So if you want it a little bit brighter on your shot or you want it kind of dimmed down to make that really grungy shot, you can do it like that. You can add in contrast into your photograph. If you want to apply more detail, you can use this as sort of your structure slider. And then we have saturation. So with the bleach bypass filter, it's probably going to dim down your colors a bit. So if you want to bring those back into your shot, just pull up on the saturation slider and you can incorporate more vibrance within your photo. And so let's reset this. And another thing you could do with the bleach bypass is just use these presets. Uh, there's a few right here and then you can open this up and there's all these ones as well. I really like this Omaha Beach one. Uh, it really brings in kind of a dark, grungy look onto your photograph, and it brings in a green tint, which is really cool for the photo anyway. So with this tint area, if I wanted to change the color of this bleach bypass, I could just click on this. I could modify this color. Let's just go to a kind of a bright yellow like that. And then I could modify the amount to incorporate more or less. And then if I want to just change the hue, I could just switch the hue of this color to a different one. And obviously that's super intense. Maybe we could do it like that. And then we'll just pull up on this brightness a little bit. Ooh, that's really bright. There we go. But the bleach bypass filter, awesome, awesome filter for just incorporating some uh, a contrasted look, desaturating the colors a little bit and making everything look a little bit uh, moodier. I really love this filter for landscapes or from working with kind of moodier portraits that I shot on overcast days. The bleach bypass filter is an awesome filter for that. And now I've switched photos and we're just gonna move on here to the next filter, which is the blur filter. So the blur filter contains five options for adding blur to your photos. There's Gaussian, motion, radial, surface, and box. Each blur has its own look. And if you're familiar with Photoshop or you've used Photoshop, you've definitely come across the uh, blurs inside Photoshop. They're an awesome tool in there and they work pretty much the same way inside Photo Raw. So we'll just click on blur. And one thing that you can use the blur filter to do is to blur out areas on your shot. You can see that once I apply that blur filter, it's bringing on a lot of blur onto my shot and it's blurring everything up. So what you can do with portraits is you can come in here and you can selectively apply this. So with the blur filter, I don't think I've ever applied the blur filter without actually masking it out of specific areas. It's kind of one of those filters you have to apply selectively. I, I don't see any other way you would just apply a blur filter and just blur everything up because you don't want everything in your shot blurry, right? So with the blur filter, typically I go in here and I'll just use the uh, default setting at first and then I'll hit B on my keyboard and that's going to grab me my masking brush. I'll lower my brush size a little bit about to the eyes and I'll go up to my opacity. I'll lower the opacity to about 45 or so, 40 to 50, kind of halfway. I'll make sure my mode is set to paint out. And then I just come in here and kind of paint out the areas that would be in focus on her face if I had sort of a, a lower aperture on my shot. So if I was shooting with like a 1.4 or something, you can kind of emulate that, that sharp and blurred look by just coming in here and masking these areas out. And you don't have to be too exact. I mean, it's not like 
an exact science in here. But the more you come in here and just kind of play with these tools, you can kind of find what looks good on what shots, how everything kind of comes together. Unblur that. That looks kind of weird with it blurred. And so now if I play with this blur, I don't like that on their nose at all. So if I play with this blur now, I can kind of incorporate a little bit of dynamic, uh, I, want, I don't want to say motion, but a little bit of uh, depth of field kind of in the background here. So it allows me to just bring in a little bit of softness to the background. So then we're just focused on the eyes now. So if I turn this blur off, and then I turn it back on, notice how much we're uh, prone to going into our eyes now. So now we're blur off, or blur on now, and it really just kind of makes the viewer focus on our eyes. Now we're really just in tune with wherever we have uh, painted that blur out. And so we can use that to really kind of fine tune where we want the sharpness within our shot. And one thing you could use in conjunction with the blur filter is you could actually use a detail filter such as dynamic contrast or something like that and paint that onto the eyes later. And we'll get into the dynamic contrast filter later in the video. So now with the blur filter, I've made that sort of nice soft area in the background, but there's a few different ways I can use the blur filter as well. Another cool way that to use the blur filter is to, is to use the motion blur. So if I click on motion here, motion blur is basically going to create a blur that looks like it's motion. So it's kind of moving from side to side. And a cool way to use that is to increase the distance a ton, lower the smoothing all the way down, and then let's play with the angle a little bit. And we can create this kind of motiony look within our model to make it look like it's, uh, it was shot with uh, a little bit of a camera shake. So what I can do now with this uh, motion blur on my shot, I can head in here and I'll just add a black and white. I'll use infrared. And now look, just by using those two filters, that blur filter and that black and white filter, we've already made a lot more interesting of a photograph. So if I hit the black backslash key on my keyboard, so that's the power of filters. Just by using two different filters, we've gone in here and created a whole different look to our image. And another thing inside the blur filter is you could just use these preset styles here, and you could just come in here and start playing with them. So some of these are really actually awesome tools for portraits, like this radial one. You can see you could bring in kind of a, a cool zoom in sort of look into your photograph, or you could use the surface one to really just add surface blur and soften everything up. It's almost like a, a glow on your shot. So one thing with the blur filter I would recommend doing is just coming in here and start playing with these different blurs. And you can really get a sense of what blurs you like on your shots and what blurs work uh, for your photography. And one thing I didn't go over, but once you've picked your type, just come down here and you can pick your type. And then you just modify the amount here to determine how strong it is. And some of these have different sliders, like this box one, or like this motion one has distance. So this is the distance between the motion. This is the angle of the motion. And then this is the smoothing. So if you want a smoother motion, you could use that. I really like it hard to get that kind of motiony look, like their face was moving or something. And then we have radial. So with radial, you can actually increase the quality of it. And that just means you either want it sharp or you want it kind of fuzzy. And then we have smoothing, so same thing as that, uh, as the motion blur, and then amount, and then with surface, amount, and then threshold. So you can pull up on the amount, and then this will protect certain areas on your shot. Blur filter, awesome filter for portraits, and if you're trying to bring in sort of a soft look into specific areas. But with the blur filter, I would definitely recommend selectively applying it or masking it in somehow using either your masking brush or a gradient. So we'll move on to the next filter. And the next filter is the borders filter. So these borders range from classic film borders to viewfinders to artistic effects to emulsion, transfers, and many more. So basically, this adds borders and frames around your photo. So if I click on borders here, you can see it brings on a nice white border onto my shot. And the borders filter is really easy to use. If you want to import your own custom border, you can just click on import. But if you want to use the preset ones that are here, you can click on your category. And there's a bunch of different categories in here. Uh, from antique, it's going to bring sort of an aged uh, frame and border around your shot. We have brush, which is more like brush strokes. 
We have camera, which is going to emulate more of a camera sort of frame. Digital, emulsion, which is going to look like it's kind of burnt around your shot. We have film to kind of emulate that uh, 35 millimeter or 120 millimeter film look. We have simple, which is basically going to have your whites and your blacks and things like that. We have sloppy borders, which is going to be more artistic and uh, a little more grungy. And then Versace, which is going to be more uh, kind of fine art looking. So let's just go up here and we'll click on emulsion and we'll go down to this one. So now I've clicked this border for the shot and I can modify the mode, modify the different blend modes. So I can come down here and a few ones that you could use or that are commonly used would be like overlay or soft light. Those are going to add in sort of a contrasted look and then screen's going to brighten things up. So you can use screen, soft light and overlay. Those are kind of the most common ones for this. I can modify the opacity. So if I want to lower the opacity of that frame on my shot, and then I have tone and color. So if I'm using a frame like this, where it's a little bit more opaque, I can actually go to my brightness and I can brighten it up or darken it. I can also modify the saturation. So if I want it more vibrant, I can modify that there. My hue shift is just going to uh, shift the hue of the actual frame. So if I want to bring in a different color, I can do it like that. And then if I click invert, this is going to invert the frame. So now I have the black kind of on the inside and the white on the outside. And then if I want to colorize it, I could actually bring in a specific color to the frame if I wanted like yellow or something. And then I could modify the hue of that fill, the amount, determining how much color is in there. And then I can actually transform this. So if I wanted to modify the size of this, I could do that there. And then I could fit this image better in the frame with this slider. And then down here, we can rotate the frame. We can flip the frame vertically and horizontally. And then I would leave this fit to canvas on pretty much all the time. And that's how to use the borders filter. Awesome filter for pretty much anything you want to apply a border or a frame around. Really looks awesome with portraits. I'd recommend staying in this simple category. A lot of these are really nice, especially these. I really like this black square key line. I think that looks super vintagey and classy, especially if we added a black and white filter onto it, just like that. So black and white and borders, awesome, awesome combination. That's the power of filters. Okay, so now we can move on to the next filter here and I'll just switch photographs. Okay, so with this photograph, since we're not modifying anything in the develop tab, or I'm not really talking too much about it because we're focused on effects. If I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, all I did in here is I've lowered the exposure a little bit. I've boosted the midtones and the whites so that it's not so bright. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, see how it's a little bit too bright right there. So I've just kind of dimmed it down and then actually we could probably pull up on our midtones just a hair more. Perfect. So now that we have our base look for our shot, we can head into the effects tab here. We'll add a filter and we can move on to the next filter, which is the channel mixer filter. So the channel mixer filter, awesome, awesome filter, and it's brand new to Photo Rod 2020. And it allows you to modify the different channels of your photograph so that you can bring out specific tones in your reds, your greens, and your blues. So with the channel mixer filter, if you're not familiar with channel mixing, I would recommend just using these preset styles in here. So if you have an infrared photograph, you can swap that. One of the most popular ones here is this black and white infrared. So if I click on black and white infrared, that's going to simulate that black and white infrared look where the foreground is bright and the sky is quite dark if there's blues. I can also use it for these other black and white filters. And then if I want to incorporate false colors, I can go down here and some of these presets incorporate some cool, crazy colors onto my shot like this false color two is pretty insane. And then there's these other kind of normal ones. We have warming polarizer, so that'll bring in kind of a warm contrasty look onto your shot. We have vivid blue, which will really liven up the blues in your shot or greens or reds. And one thing I like to use with these vivid ones, let's say green, for example, if I turn this off and on, you can see it's really, really strong on my shot, but it does a good job of bringing in that green, but it doesn't look great on the clouds up here. So what I typically do with this channel mixer, if I want these tones applied to a specific area is I'll go into my blending options and I'll use this apply to menu. And what the apply to menu is doing is it's basically taking this, filter and it's limiting it to a specific color or tonal range that I pick with either this menu or this color dropper. And I would recommend using the color dropper 
Just click on the color dropper, and let's say I only want this green applied to the foreground area where these greens are at, and I don't want it applied to the sky. Well, I'll just hover over a nice shade of green, drop it down, and now take a look at my sky area up here compared to the foreground. If I turn this off and on, that green filter isn't being applied anywhere up here. It's only being applied to this foreground area where those greens are because I used that apply to menu and dropped it down right there. So let's just reset this channel mixer filter real quick. So in the channel mixer filter, it basically relies on the values of the RGB channels within your shot. So right here, I have the different channels. I have red, I have green, and I have blue. So you can see here with red, um, the normal state of my shot, uh, you can see I have kind of a normal state on my photograph and the channel mixer isn't doing anything. Well, that's because in my red channel, my red is at 100. In my green channel, my green is at 100. In my blue channel, my blue is at 100. Now that means everything is normal in the photograph. But now if I start messing with any of these different uh, color modifiers, let's say I want to bring in more green into my red channel. Once I pull up on this green into the red channel, you can see it's changing up the look and the dynamic of the shot because I'm actually modifying the power of the green channel within my mix of colors. And then if I wanted to do the same thing to blue, let's say I wanted to bring in more reds to the blue channel, I could increase the weight of the reds. And that's going to start modifying the shot. And down here we have constant, and constant is basically the brightness of the overall channel. So if I want to modify my greens, let's say, and we'll bring in more reds, and we'll lower the blues. Now I have this really powerful red and green mixture, and I've lowered the blues. So if I want to brighten up my greens, I can use this constant, and that will brighten up the greens within that green channel. So one thing you could do with this channel mixer filter you could head into these specific colors, and if you want to brighten up specific color tones like your reds, your greens, or your blues, you could just click on that color, you could come down to your constant, and you could just pull that up, and that will really, really increase the amount of that color within your shot. And again, you could just use it on specific areas. So if I wanted to apply some green, I could just boost this up a little bit, and then I'll go to my Apply To menu, click on the dropper, drop it right there, and now if I turn this off and on, it's incorporated a really, really vibrant green into just the foreground area, just because I pulled up on that constant right there, that brightness of this green channel. And the channel mixer filter is a pretty powerful mixer. Channel mixing is kind of a process and technique on its own. Uh, so if you're really new to filters in general, I would recommend just using these different preset styles, especially that false, co false color too. I really like that one. I mean, it does kind of wonders to to landscape shots. So that's a channel mixer filter. Awesome filter for most likely landscapes. I probably wouldn't recommend using the channel mixer filter on. So that's a channel mixer filter, an awesome filter for portraits and landscapes. If you're using it for portraits, I would recommend staying inside of the black and white uh, preset styles. And if you're using it for landscapes, I'd recommend playing with it. You know, go with the vivid blue or the vivid greens and see what it does to your shot, and then use that apply to menu to target those specific tones in either your foreground or your background. All right, so now we have another shot. We'll add a filter, and we'll get on to the next filter, which is the color adjustment filter. So the color adjustment filter is an awesome filter that allows you to modify specific color ranges and tones within your image. So the Definition says, target color ranges and adjust their hue, saturation, and brightness. Perfect for making the sky more blue or the grass more green. So if I click on this, it's not going to do anything at first because I haven't modified any of these different sliders. So in the color adjustment, we basically have a row of different colors. We have red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, and magenta. Now, if I see one of these specific colors in my shot and I want to modify it, I can use this color adjustment to do that. So let's take a look here and let's just keep our eyes on these yellow lines in here and right there and kind of in the background. So we go into the yellow color range here. If I head down to my range slider, I can modify the amount of the yellows that I'm uh, adjusting. So let's just pull it up quite a bit here. And then if I want to modify the actual color of the yellows, I can either turn them more orange 
or I can turn them more green. I'm going to turn them more orange. And then I can head down to my saturation here and watch as I modify the saturation. I'm specifically applying this filter just to those yellows because that's the one I've chosen in this row of colors. So now I can pull up on the saturation. I can really make those yellows pop out of my shot. And then I can modify the brightness as well. So if I want to dim them down, I can pull this down a little bit. I could pull it up. And it really does an awesome job of just modifying that specific color range within my image. Another thing you could use the color adjustment filter for is you could head down here and click on this color dropper. And now you can choose what you want to adjust with this menu. Let's say I want to adjust the saturation. Now I can use this color dropper and I'll head over to my photograph. And let's say I want to modify these colors in her jacket. I want to modify the saturation of these oranges in here. So if I click, I can drag to the right or the left. And that will modify the orange colors within my shot because that's the one that I've chosen with this color dropper. And I can do that by clicking on any of these colors. So if I wanted blue, I could modify the blue, and so on and so forth. And if you want to use these presets, there's a bunch of awesome presets in here that you can use. Um, they're pretty simple. You know, if you have a lot of yellows in your shot, click on fall, it will increase the yellows. If you have a lot of foliage or some greens, a uh, nice landscape, you can click on foliage and that'll help out your greens. So a lot of these are pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. And then one thing I would recommend using with the color adjustment is just using this color dropper and you can really kind of fine tune those specific colors within your shot. Uh, color adjustment filter, good for anything, uh, landscape, portraits, whatever you're trying to do if you need to really target specific color tones in your shot. Move on, on to the next shot here and we'll add a filter and we'll move on to color balance. So color balance is an all new filter to 2020 and it's a really powerful filter that allows you to modify uh, specific uh, tonal ranges in your shot and adjust the colors within them. So the color balance filter, if we go back to the filters dialog, add or remove a color cast from the highlights, midtones, or shadows. This filter is perfect for color or corrected mixing. This filter is perfect for corrected mixed lighting scenarios or is a fun way to add split tone or tritone color tints. So with the color balance filter, really easy to use. Make sure you have whatever range you want to modify. Let's start with our highlights. So we can head up here to kind of a highlighted area. And we have our range selected, which is our highlights. And the hue is automatically going to be set to this set of sort of red side over here. So if we pull up on the amount, it's automatically going to bring in red color to our highlights. So what we can do here to adjust that is we can just modify the hue and we can either make it blue or red or whatever really hue we want make it a kind of orange color there. And then I can modify the brightness. So if I want them a little more bright or a little darker, I can modify that here. And you can see that it's just applying this to those highlighted areas and nowhere else on my shot. And that's because I have this highlights tab selected. Then we have midtones. So if we zoom out here, the majority of the shot, kind of the midtones are here in the water area. Uh, these kind of middle grays within the scene. So we'll just, we'll just pull it about right here. We'll click on our midtones and we'll pull this over to a nice blue right there. And then watch as I pull up on the amount. Actually more purple than anything. But you can see that by pulling up on that amount, it's really bringing in a lot of strong blues into the photograph. And it's only applying them to the midtones because that's the tab that I have open. So I'll leave it at that blue color on my hue. I'll modify the amount down a little bit. And then I'll just brighten these up a tad, just like that. So now if we go over here, we can kind of zoom in right here. This is our shadows on the shot. So if I click on my shadow tab, same thing. I'm going to go down to my amount. I'll pull that up and take a look at the shadow tones. You can see they're getting super red because I have that hue all the way to the left, which is that red color. And you can see it's only applying that red to those shadowy tones within my shot. So if I pull this down and up, you can see where the biggest adjustment is applied is right in here in the darkest areas of my photograph. Now I can modify the brightness a little bit. And let's make it a little more green, let's say. There we go. 
And that's the color balance filter. A really awesome filter for sort of any photograph where you're trying to modify the different tones in your shot. Uh, just start playing with it. If you want to modify the highlights, make sure you have the highlights tab selected or the shadows tab selected. And if it's not doing anything to your photo, make sure you have the amount pulled up because it's always going to start with the amount at zero and you're not going to really see anything. So if you're not seeing any color change, try to pull up on the amount and that should help. So moving on to the next photo here and the next filter, we have color enhancer. So the color enhancer filter is kind of that tried and true color filter for photo raw. It's been around forever. Uh, the color enhancer gives you complete control over color manipulation in your photo, whether it is globally across your entire photo or by adjusting different color ranges. So basically you have the uh, color area from your develop tab inside of a filter and along with it you have the color adjustment filter as well. So if I click on color enhancer, I can see I have kind of the similar area of my temperature, tint, saturation, vibrance, my purity, but then I have this color range similar to what we were doing with the color adjustment filter. So I can modify my temperature if I want. I can correct for different color casts in here. I can pull back on the saturation if I want to, modify my vibrance, things like that. And also I can go down here and if I want to modify how pure my highlights or shadows are, I can go down here and I can remove some color from my highlights or I can remove some color from my shadows by using these different purity sliders. And this will allow me to purify those highlights and shadows so those are not so vibrant with those colors. And then down here I have my color range. So same thing as the color adjustment. If you wanted to adjust uh, the reds, for example, I could click that and then if we keep an eye on these reds here, we can modify the saturation of them strictly by using this color range area. So we've switched photographs here and I'll add a filter and we'll move on to the cross process filter. So this filter simulates the effect of cross processing film de deliberately with the incorrect chemistry. It creates unnatural colors and high contrast. So if I click on it, you can tell it immediately does a whole lot to my photograph. And with the cross process filter, pretty easy to use. You just go down here, you choose your color and they're all pretty intense. And then you go in and you can modify the amount. You can modify the brightness, contrast and saturation. So similar controls to the antique filter. It's just a little more wonky, I'd say. And I typically don't use the cross process filter too much on my photographs just because it is a little bit too intense. But what I've learned to use with the cross process filter is to use the blend mode pin light. So if I go over here to this photograph and I click on the blending options, I'll go down to my mode. And if I head down to my contrast mode, which are these overlay, soft light, hard light, these are my contrast blend modes in Photo Raw. So I'm going to go down here to this pin light blend mode. And what pin light is going to do is it's actually going to modify some of the color tones within the original photograph, kind of depending on whether they're brighter or darker than my, my cross process filter. But in doing that, it's also going to incorporate contrast within my scene. So by doing uh, the color kind of switch and by incorporating some contrast, it's actually going to remove a lot of that wonkiness that was there in the beginning. So now if I turn this off and on, see how it's a lot more natural of a filter. It's not so intense on my shot. It really looks quite natural. And I honestly kind of like what it does in here. It brings out a nice glow in here. I mean, it kind of reddens up the fingertips in here, but you could always brush that out so that's not so intense. But now if I go down here to these colors and I hover over these, they're immediately not so strong and scary, they're actually kind of nice and they actually add kind of a nice look onto my photograph. Like this green strong is kind of a, a subdued contrasted look on my shot, which I really like. And it really brings out the contrast in that uh, fly by brewing logo there. So cross process filter, if you're scared of it or not sure what to do with it, go into the blending options, use pin light, and it'll definitely help out the look. If you're not looking to use a blend mode and you want to kind of use it tried and true, I'd recommend lowering the amount to about 40 or so, modifying the brightness a little bit, and then playing with the contrast. And then let's lower the saturation a little bit. And boom, not too bad of a look. And then we can always lower the opacity like that. So cross process filter, uh, kind of one of those unique filters in Photo Raw. I would recommend using it on shots like this, maybe some product photography, um, it may look a little crazy on portraits, but you can definitely get away with it on some landscapes. Those are the first 10 filters inside Photo Raw and some unique ways to use them, how to use them, why to use them. 
I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot about the power of filters inside Amon Photo Raw 2020. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel to stay updated with all new on one videos, tips and tricks, and updates and announcements with our products. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend.